Hi, I'm Hannah and in this video I'm going to be demoing some of Toolbag 4's brand new shaders and showing you how to best utilise them in your artworks. Within this tutorial we'll be covering how to set up transparent materials to work with the ray tracing system, the new subsurface scattering pipeline, how to set up clear coat reflections and taking a look at the microfiber shader too. First of all, the most basic of the three, I'm going to walk you through how to set up transparent materials. I'd recommend watching the dedicated introduction to ray tracing video prior to this one, as I will be needing to tweak some of the rendering options to get these materials to display properly. In order for materials to render as transparent, you first need to make sure that the transmission is enabled in the material itself. Please note that the transmission settings will only work in ray tracing mode and will not behave as expected in the raster rendering mode. To begin, we'll create a glass material for our bottles. Create a new material and scroll down in the settings to the transmission section. If you click on the downwards arrow, you can see that currently it's set to none. Change this to Refraction in order to make the transmission settings appear. By default, the transmissivity of the material will be ubiquitous. Though in this section, you can plug in a transmissivity map if you want to mask off non-transmissive areas on your models. Make sure to drop your roughness down to zero as well, else you'll end up with this cloudy look to your glass. In the transmission settings, you can apply individual values for the absorption, the scattering, density, and anisotropy of your transparent material in order to gain greater control over the final look of your material. We can use these three settings to create different types of transparent materials, like smoke or dirty liquids. If I switch to this pre-existing whiskey material, you can see that increasing the scattering, density, and anisotropy creates this sort of volumetric cloudy look. You can also tint the transmissive materials. By default, it will look to use the albedo color, so you can tint it via the albedo color picker or a supplied albedo map. Alternatively, you can disable the use albedo checkbox and use the tint color picker instead. The next section that we need to enable to get our glass working is the reflectivity. Scroll down and click on the downward arrow to access the different reflection modes. Switch it to refractive index. This is going to tell the renderer how refractive the material is, i.e. how much it bends the light when passing from one medium to another. In technical terms, the refractive index provides values that define how fast light moves through a real world material. For example, the refractive index of water is 1.333, whereas something like diamond is much higher at about 2.417. It's important to set the right refractive index for your material and you can usually find tables of physically correct values online. For these bottle examples I set up just before, I'm going to keep the index value at its default of 1.5, which is roughly what we expect of clear glass. Now we've set up the correct parameters in the material, but if you're finding that your transparent materials are displaying black in your viewport, then you'll need to increase the transmission bounces in your rendering settings. If the amount of transmission bounces are too low, light rays can't penetrate through the materials and therefore produce a solid black result instead. The second shader that I want to dive into is the new subsurface scattering system. Previous versions of Toolbag did include subsurface scattering in the diffuse options, but the location of its settings have now been changed. For those new to the concept, 
Subsurface scattering is a rendering technique used to simulate the way that light bounces inside of a material and is particularly key for convincing looking skin, hair and cloth. Subsurface scattering can now be enabled via the transmission module in the material settings. Clicking on this arrow will bring up the drop down menu for switching between different rendering modes. There's two subsurface scattering shaders available for use here, subsurface and volumetric scattering. Subsurface scattering is the more regularly used model and uses an approximated shading model to achieve results. This is better for low poly meshes or thin meshes like hair cards, foliage and cloth. Comparatively, volumetric scattering is more physically accurate. This model works better with high poly meshes but comes at the cost of a slightly longer rendering time. If using volumetric scattering on thinner or low poly meshes then you may notice some faceting in the shading. Once subsurface is selected, the transmission module will now be populated with additional settings. It's worth noting that both subsurface scattering and volumetric scattering both have very similar settings, the only difference being that the volumetric scattering has an additional slider to set the anisotropy. In these additional settings, you can supply a scatter map or specify the depth and color if you're not using one. Using a scatter depth of 1mm is usually sufficient here, but it can be increased for more exaggerated or stylized effects. Here you can also supply a fuzz map and a mask map, which will mask between transmission and diffusion. Fuzz, scatter and subsurface mask maps can all be authored within Toolbag's new texturing system. You can add each one to your project maps within the texture project. If I switch quickly to the texturing workspace, you can see that if I add a new layer, I now have the ability to customize the scatter, SSS mask and fuzz on top of the usual map types. You can see if I turn on this bright directional light, the volumetric scattering creates the illusion of light rays scattering inside the skin around the nose and adds that extra level of realism to the material. One thing to note is that both scattering shaders do still work in the raster rendering mode when ray tracing is off, but they will be approximated rather than physically accurate. Clear Coat Reflections are a new addition to Toolbag 4's shader library and replaced the secondary reflections found in previous versions. Clear Coats are great for adding a sort of glazed look to objects and is commonly used in vehicle rendering for the car paint. Essentially, Clear Coat shaders allow you to add an additional layer on top of your existing material and textures. To turn on clear coat reflections, all three of these elements need to be enabled. Clear coat reflections, clear coat microsurface, and clear coat reflectivity. In the clear coat microsurface panel, you have the option to use roughness, gloss, or an advanced microsurface input. I'll just be using standard roughness for this example. With any of these, you can use a microsurface map to define the type of surface that will sit underneath the glaze. You won't notice any effect from the map until we enable the clear coat reflectivity module. Clear coat reflectivity is used to set the reflection shader. Your first option is to use the traditional specular shader. Within this panel, you can set the intensity of the specular highlights and the Fresnel. You can also tint both of these, which may be useful for more stylized projects. 
Or if you're making use of the ray tracing rendering, then you can use the refractive index instead. Like with the specular approach, if you increase the index slider, then the microsurface map will become more apparent. While having these extra options might seem a little intimidating, they ultimately offer more control over the final result. The final toolbag shader that I want to demo is the microfiber shader. In the diffusion panel of the material, open the drop down menu and select microfiber from the three options. This shader is used to approximate cloth and fabrics by applying a sheen to your material. Sheen is used to vary specular reflection in things like cloth materials, two of the best examples being velvet or satin. You can see in the satin example that without the sheen, the material looks more like PVC or shiny polyester. Increasing it back to one adds this pale fresnel to the cloth which simulates the glossy effect that you expect with real life satin. The tint of the sheen can be chosen with this colour picker. And the strength of it can then be adjusted with this slider here. You can see in this wool example that we're using a sheen map instead of a slider, and this works with the height map to create a more fluffy, fuzzy kind of cloth with a very specific weave effect. The effect of this is quite subtle but certainly makes a difference. The roughness of the sheen can be adjusted with this third slider. This changes how the direction of the microfibers differ from the surface normal directions. The larger the value, the more the effect of the Fresnel spreads. Whereas a low value results in a sharper, more contained Fresnel. Please note though that this shader is designed to work with dielectric materials and so will cause graphical errors if used with shiny metallic materials. So that brings us to the end of this short demonstration. We're excited for you to dive into Toolbug 4's new shaders and look forward to seeing what you create with them. As always, if you need any further information on any of Toolbug 4's new features, head on over to our website for more instructional videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.